Hello, my name is Ashish and I, in this video we will see connect non-Azure resources to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Just to give you a brief introduction, Microsoft Defender for Cloud can protect hybrid workloads including your on-premises, Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform or GCP. For instance, you are a security operation analyst working at a company that is in the process of implementing cloud workload protection with Microsoft Defender for Cloud and you will be responsible for protecting resources located on premises, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform and you decide to Azure Arc enable the servers to provide easier management of the non-Azure machines. And next you protect the virtual machines with Defender for Cloud. Alright, so to protect the non-Azure resources, there is a need to protect the resources because everyone, each organization is struggling to control and govern the complex environments or the complex needs. Some of them are not only Azure Cloud, they are also on the data centers, they are also on multi-cloud as well. And then there are a lot of dependencies on every cloud vendor and there are multiple teams who need who need to learn and cooperate with each other to make sure that you are protecting all of the resources including Azure and non-Azure VMs and then there are DevOps and IT ops operational models which are hard to implement and then so herein we have Azure Arc which simplifies the governance and management by delivering a consistent multi-cloud and on-premises management platform. It would manage the entire environment with a single pan of glass by protecting the existing non-Azure on-premise or other cloud resources into Azure Resources Manager. It would also manage virtual machines, cl Kubernetes clusters, databases if they are running in Azure. It would also use familiar Azure services and management capabilities regardless of where they live. And it also configure custom location as an abstraction layer on top of Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. And then using Azure Arc, we can manage the following Azure types or resource types hosted outside, outside of the cluster. So if I just launch my text box, so you can do servers, you can have your Kubernetes clusters, you can have your Azure Data Services, which is Azure SQL Managed Instance or SQL MI, you have your Postgres SQL. And there are some hyperscale services as well. Then you also have your SQL Server. You can enroll instances from any location with SQL Server on Azure Arc enabled servers. All right. Now, if I just erase it. Now, how would you connect non-Azure machines? Microsoft Defender for Cloud can monitor the security posture of your non-Azure computers, but first you need to connect them to Azure. So let me uh, tell you, then you can connect your non-Azure computers in any of the following ways. Let me pull up my text box again. Okay. Now you can use Azure Arc for uh, uh, which is the recommended method. It's, you, it's called using Azure Arc enabled servers. Then you can also use Defender for Cloud uh, portal in the, sorry, Defender for Cloud page in the Azure portal. Okay. All right. Now, how would you add non-Azure VMs uh, or machines with Azure Arc? 
Azure Arc enables servers in the preferred way of adding your non-Azure machines to Defender for Cloud. A machine with Azure Arc enabled servers becomes an Azure resource. Okay, so let's say if I enable Azure Arc, it would become an Azure server. Okay. And it will appear in the Defender for Cloud. Defender for Cloud portal or page on the Azure portal. Now, this Azure Arc would, uh, or I would say Azure Arc enabled servers provide enhanced capabilities such as the option to enable guest configuration policies on the machine, deploy the log analytics agent as an extension, simplify deployment with other Azure Arc services and more. Okay. So if you ask me what is Azure Arc enabled servers? Okay, so Azure Arc enabled servers would allow us to manage the Windows and Linux machines hosted outside of Azure on the corporate network or other cloud providers, just like we are managing native Azure virtual machines. When a hybrid machine is connected to Azure, it becomes a connected machine and is treated as a resource in Azure. Each connected machine has a resource ID and is included in a resource group and benefits from standard Azure constructs such as Azure policy and applying tax. Service providers who manage a customer's on-premise infrastructure can manage their hybrid machines just like they do today with native Azure resources. So to make sure that you are delivering this experience with your hybrid machines which are hosted outside of Azure, the Azure Connected Machine Agents needs to be installed on each machine. So which is Azure Connected Machine Agent needs to be lots of spelling mistake today installed. So this agent does not deliver any other functionality and it does not replace the Azure Log Analytics Agent. The Log Analytics Agent for Windows and Linux is required when you want to proactively monitor the operating system and workloads running on the machine. Okay. So now if you want to do it from the Azure portal, so let me just quickly log on to the portal and show you that. Okay, I am logged on to the portal. I'll go to Microsoft Defender for Cloud in my Azure portal. Okay, you see getting started. Click on here. Add non-Azure servers. Click on configure. It will ask you to create uh, a new workspace. Or you can upgrade it. Or you can use the existing one. create a new workspace the you may see only workspaces in subscriptions you click on upgrade to a 30 day trial period then you will click on add servers to view instructions how to install the log analytics agent okay and after onboarding you will see those servers under the inventory how you protect multi cloud environments you connect your aws and gcp deployments to get unified view you click on configure here you go to the environment settings, right? And in here, like I have added my GitHub connector. You can add your AWS accounts. You click on add environment, Amazon Web Services. You will add your uh, connector name and then you will correspondingly add your AWS account ID and then you will select the plan. After filling all the instructions, same you would have to do for your GCP environment as well. Okay. And if you see my GitHub 
because it's still in preview. You just have to enter these details. All right. If you have multiple workspaces, the list of log analytics workspaces is shown. The list includes, if applicable, the default workspace created by you for you by Defender for Cloud when automatic provisioning was enabled. You have to select that or you can select another workspace. You can also add computers to an existing workspace or create a new workspace. After adding the servers for relevant workspace, the agent management page will appear and then you would uh, choose the relevant procedure. Either you want to onboard your Azure Stack VMs, you want to onboard Linux machines or you want to onboard Windows machines. And then you can do it. So for every machine for Linux or for Stack VMs or for Windows, there are different steps that you need to perform. Make sure that you do that and then you will be able to protect your non-Azure VMs which are hosted on site or on-prem or on different cloud providers using the Defender for Cloud. I hope this was informative for all of you guys. If you have any further queries, please mention them in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.